midst of perhaps Clemson's worst stretch of the season in which they lost three consecutive games by double figures. But of late, Clemson has lost a couple of one-point games, a double overtime game, and hoping to get right in Chapel Hill. Tonight they're underway, and Clemson will have it first. Starting lineups very similar to what you've seen in the past. The exception, Clemson coach Brad Brownell is starting Jack Clark. Number five, you see him in the corner for the fourth time tonight. And a turnaround shot from Chase Hunter, the first two of the night. Right away, you're seeing Clemson target Elliott Cadeau, similar to what Georgia Tech did in their game. In practice today, Carolina was running a play. They wanted to get Baycott a touch on the first possession, but... Tigers able to take it away. Shefflin is now guarding Baycott, but no problem. Harrison Ingram, who also had a sensational game on Saturday night against Duke, evens the score at two. Here is the starting five for Brownells Tigers. Chase Hunter and Jack Clark. Joseph Girard, the former Syracuse player, along with Shefflin, who might be the most improved player in the ACC. And P.J. Hall, as Jay mentioned. There is Shefflin with his first shot of the night, and he puts it in. Yeah, Shuffling, you talked about in his last game against North Carolina, 16 points, 11 rebounds, really able to take advantage of that with his size down low. You know, a lot of people always talk about the game before the game. Reese, that was a Georgia Tech game. We've seen the game after the game. Look at Kansas, prime example, going against Kansas State in the octagon of doom. You know, the tendency for teams to take their foot off the gas. I don't, I'm not sure that's going to happen to Carolina. They're a team that has more of a veteran presence. But still, you wonder about their focus and their concentration. Joseph Girard knocks down his first shot. Girard in his career at Syracuse and had struggles against North Carolina. It's 11 of 43 in the fourth coming into tonight. Baycott misses his first shot. Girard's coming the other way. Clemson up 6 to 2. Saw the starting lineup for the Heels, Jay Will. You might see a lot of them tonight. Seth Trimble won't play for North Carolina tonight. Got banged up in practice yesterday. Nothing that happened in the Duke game. He is not available tonight. As Gerard is now two for two with a three. And Clemson has jumped on top by a touchdown. Shefflin with another rebound off the Davis miss. Now you see, we talked about the Duke hangover. Such an emotional matchup, but the record has been quite good. And already, Clemson's hit a couple of threes, which is one more than they hit in the first match against Carolina, when they went one for 18 from the floor, and they're up by double figures. Joseph Gerard doing a really good job of pushing the tempo. Not the fastest player or most explosive, but very good at getting to his spots on the floor. Finding P.J. Hall lagging in transition. Clemson has it missed, and they're also getting every rebound. Boy, Shefflin gets deep position on Ingram. Those two guys very similar in terms of productivity across the board, and that's the first miss of the night for the Tigers. Here comes R.J. Davis, the leading scorer in the ACC. Shefflin with another rebound. Clemson doing a very good job of getting back in transition defense. One of the things North Carolina is superb at is off made shots, pushing the ball down, one of the fastest paces in the country. Clemson doing a great job of communicating this far. Already has one three, and now he's got another. P.J. Hall, who only had 10 points, and Hubert Davis is not going to wait on the media timeout as Clemson, who has won exactly one time in its entire history. They're 1-60 in, in the Dean Dome, and they're up 15-2. Clarify the note I had a moment ago. They're up one in 60 in the Dino in Chapel Hill. They've had their troubles here, but not so far tonight. North Carolina typically plays in drop coverage on PNR, and you have two guys that are able to knock down shots in PJ Hall and Shefflin as well. And Joe Gerard, his ability to get into those little gaps, his game is never rushed offensively. I think you're going to have to see Elliot Cadell or RJ Davis get up underneath him and force him to be uncomfortable. A significantly better start than the Tigers had at home a month ago. Now, down 13. P.J. Hall is absolutely battling Baycott down low for position on the block. But Clemson showing a little zone here. Saw this in practice this morning. Here's Baycott who rolls it in. Now Clemson is not going to bring a double team. That's going to be opportunity for Baycott to eat all down low on the block. 
Chase Hunter finds some space, and he knocks down another one from the short corner. He's got four. R.J. Davis lets fly. R.J. had 17 against Duke the other night. Brought almost traveled, but 25 to 14 from the four. Hunter turns down the ball screen. Ball's already hit a couple of three-pointers. Got Baycott to go up, and P.J. left it on the rim, saves it, so they'll get the fresh 20. Great hands by P.J. Hall to grab that offensive board. Ball's already hit two, and was going for three. There's an offensive rebound from Shefflin. Kick out to Jack Clark. That's no good, and Harrison Ingram pulls it away. Here's R.J. Davis. One of the critical keys for Clemson to win this game is take care of the basketball. North Carolina had 17 points off of 11 turnovers by Pick in their last game, and they allowed them to get a rhythm offensively. Big time. Draws the foul on Hall. First meeting last month, Hall fouled out. That's his first tonight. What a start for Clemson. Or you want to give it to the big guys. It's a battle of the bigs. Armando Baycott and P.J. Hall, two of the top bigs in the ACC, going head-to-head. -head. Basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. Visit Progressive.com. Well, that celebration on Franklin Street apparently has not died down much because North Carolina started out in a little bit of a fog. In fact, Earlier today, Hubert Davis said that he got into his team at practice yesterday. I asked him if it was because one of those coach things that you plan to do after a big win, or did they need it? He said they needed it. Ben Todd goes to the free throw line and rattles it home and falling in a big hole right out of the gate. But it's a difficult thing, Jay Will, and so much as, as you know better than anyone poured into that rivalry game on Saturday night. I mean, thousands of kids on Franklin Street. I mean, at Duke, we would have barn fires. We're so emotionally invested in that game. The most difficult aspect of it, RD, is walking around campus the next couple of days and everybody telling you how great you are. It's almost like you won a championship and you have to recognize there's still nine regular season games left in the ACC and Clemson has been in a ton of battles. They never came out on the right side of a lot of them, but they've been in the fight. There's a good find from Gerard, but R.J. Godfrey just checked into the game, can't get it. Paxson Wojcik, who's seen his minutes cut in recent games, is in for Hubert Davis. As we mentioned earlier, Seth Tremble not available tonight. And Baycott goes right at Godfrey, and he gets the end one. This is what North Carolina needs to do more of. The first possession against Duke, they ran a back screen. They put Armando Baycott on the block. He went to work and they fed him consistently throughout the course of the game. At times, North Carolina gets very guard heavy. Now, R.J. Davis, one of the guest best guards in the nation, but at times they forget about Armando Baycott down low on the block. Him being a priority as much as R.J. Davis being a priority is key to success for the Cardinals. He's got seven of North Carolina's nine points. They've gotten him started. But part of that, Jay Will, isn't it also Armando being a little more assertive and demanding the basketball? We call it the Georgia Tech game, and I, I gotta give a shout out to Hubert Davis. The last couple of years, he's seen Hubert who has a very low-key demeanor. He pulled Armando Baycott against Georgia Tech and laid into him. Very much felt like I was watching Roy Williams. So the evolution of Hubert Davis as a coach is continuing to be seen. Carolina in transition. Boy, did we see a lot of this on Saturday night. Cormac Ryan misses the layup, and Shefflin has his fifth rebound already. Jack Clark. That's no good. Here's Ryan. North Carolina will look to run. Clemson able to get back. A tough shot there by Clemson. You don't want to pay, play at the same pace as North Carolina. More of a controlled set, slow down the tempo of the game. Force them to execute defensively each and every possession. Ryan open for three. He has struggled a little bit relative to his capabilities. Great pass. find from R.J. Davis. And a chance for another three-point play for Baycott. R.J. Davis turns his corner. 
great change of speed, sees the play before it even comes. Godfrey there comes out to try to block the shot from the weak side. Baycott does a great job of giving a target with his hands, two hands ready to catch the ball. RJ acquires and attracts so much attention, he'll get those feeds all evening long. Well, as you mentioned earlier, prior to the Duke game, previous three, Baycott, the average a little over six points per game and six and a half rebounds. Yeah, he's in double figures. Look how it comes into the lane here and just drops it off. But you saw Baycott's hands ready. I can't tell you guys how many times you see bigs in the NBA and in college. Their hands are down. They're not actively ready, but Baycott gave him a target. Chauncey Wiggins would stretch forth and shoot the balls into the lineup for Clemson. He's number 21. The Tigers desperately need a basket. Chase Hunter. Great guard pressure by R.J. Davis there. Hall taking Bacon inside. Uses the left wow. hand. And now P.J. Hall will have a chance for a three-point play. You talk about matching the physicality of Baycott down low. Uh, Hall doesn't mind battling down low, pounding back and forth, but also going to the perimeter, finishing through the contact with the left hand. One of the best players not only in the ACC, but in the country in P.J. Hall. He's second only to R.J. Davis in scoring in the ACC. Baycott has 10, and if P.J. can make this free throw, he'll have nine. He is an 82% free throw shooter on the season. It's obvious, though, for North Carolina, pound the ball down low when Hall is in the game, try to get him in foul trouble, and vice versa. If you're P.J. Hall, take the ball down low on the block, keep running pick and roll, make Armando Baycott work defensively, which hopefully tires his legs out on the offensive end. Hall has nine. Clemson stems the tide for the moment, the lead is eight. Three of those numbers in the early going. Both guys have shown up. They get it inside in that zone, and Baycott kicks it back out. Rattles out on Cormac Ryan and Jalen Washington just into the game for North Carolina. And Wiggins tied up. Carolina shooting around 35.7% from the three-point line. And Carmack Ryan was able to knock down a couple of versus Duke, but... He's one of the critical keys to this team potentially winning a championship, keeping the defense honest with his outside three-point shooting. Bad defense there. Johnson Wiggins was called for that last foul, and he's out of the game. The ball went off of P.J. Hall, out of bounds. He'll stay with the Tar Heels. Maxim Wojcik, the transfer from Brown, will inbound it. Getting a little extended playing time in the first half with the absence of Seth Tremble tonight. Knocked out of bounds by Hunter. Still six on the shot clock. Well, North Carolina taking care of the basketball as well. Had double-digit turnovers in both the Florida State game and the Georgia Tech game at the half. Buck versus Duke, 17 assists, five turnovers. And they take care of the ball. They're a dangerous team in transition. RJ thought he got hit on that one, but it went behind the end. He had a look at Brad Brownell, still donning the quarter zip. Hubert Davis, meanwhile, is up in his game and is back in the sport coat this season. We're glad to see that. Soon we'll get the suits, and if we can get everybody out of sneakers and into grown-up shoes, my job here will be complete. <laughs> You can't help yourself, can you? I can't. Here comes Cormac Ryan. Baycott has Hall buried oh. deep, and that'll be an easy one. Armando Baycott has North Carolina's last 10 points. He is carrying them and keeping them in the game. DJ Hall complains to the referee. You don't meet him early. He gets too deep on the block. Hall. Buckets. Wow. His third triple of the night, and he's got a dozen. I mean, what a clash between Titans down low. You must be feeling pretty good about spotlighting that matchup right off the top of the It was the matchup. Well, it was the right one, and he's lived up to billing so far in the first nine minutes. Here's R.J. Davis. 
Ryan trying to find the ring. What a rebound. How about Jack Clark, the NC State transfer, coming in and skying for that rebound. Hunter pull up, kick to the corner to Josh Beadle, who's in, and Beadle is bumped as he goes along the baseline. And Pat Adams calls the foul. Beadle was going. So, who wore it best? You got the window pane, you got the plaid, all in a little bit of baby blue. Hubert's going with a full button down tonight rather than the polo. That's an upgrade. Where's the tie? The Gaudi 18 and 4 record, the number one seed according to Joe Lenardi, but in the four losses, it's been a common theme and one that at least is starting out that way tonight, Jay Will. Yeah, and that's what Clemson is doing right now. On pace, obviously, for 80 points in tonight's matchup. Opponents' field goal percentage, they're shooting. 52% from the field. They're shooting 50% from the three-point line, and there's no rebounding margin for North Carolina. They're actually losing the rebounding battle, minus one. I think the tempo of this game has to pick up for the Tar Heels, and they have to find a way to get R.J. Davis going. Didn't really become a prolific, I mean, off night against Duke, 17 points, first-class problems and a win, but at the same time, he is a tempo creator with the way he can hunt his shot in transition. Last month when these two teams played, no one scored a fast break point, and we haven't had one yet tonight. Clemson up against the shot clock. Godfrey had to put it up quickly, he doesn't. Paxton Wojcik will push it up the floor. Once again, great job by Clemson. Four jerseys getting back to the paint and protecting the rim. Davis has missed his first five. The ACC is leading score. Logic the lefty. Hey, knocks down a three. Just the second made field goal for North Carolina by anyone not named Armando Baycott. Gerard. DJ Hall might have gotten a little shove in the back. Carolina gets away with it. Logic taking advantage of his minutes. He's on the drive and loses it, and he'll be fouled by Gerard. Rojic is bringing in the energy that North Carolina needed at the beginning of this game. Just sticking his nose in there amongst the bigs, him and R.J. Davis to grab that rebound. Those are the 50-50 balls that you must get. And Wojcik is bringing that tenacity, hitting a three, getting a defensive rebound, then pushing the ball in transition and getting a foul. The team foul on Clemson, the last one called against Gerard. Cadeau will inbound the ball. Shefflin has returned. He's guarding Ingram. Ingram turns it over. And at least a lot of times we talk about the hangover effect being on the players. It's also on the crowd as well. You know, you came off a game like that where the energy is hitting decimal levels. Crowd basketball teams haven't really heard before. It's important for the players to get the crowd in the game also. Coming up next, we'll take you to Foster Pavilion and Waco Pop Isaacs and number 23 Texas Tech against the sensational freshman Jacoby Walter and number 13 Baylor, who we'll see against Kansas. Log Allen Field House on Saturday and Joe Girard knocks down another one. He's got a even Clemson. He's up 26-17. Very different game than Clemson shooting one of 18 from the three-point line, but they did last time these two teams met. Would you hit one? Couldn't get that one. Here come the Tigers. Clark is strong, and he got hit by Jalen Withers, who's checked into the game and transfer from Lewis. Oh, I beg your pardon, that foul was called. I thought Withers got him, but it was Jalen Washington who called the foul on. You know, everybody wants to be a fast, speedy point guard. If you notice Joseph Girard, every time he's taking the ball down the court in transition, it's not blow by speed. He's moving at his own speed, but his head is always up. And he's really good at changing angles and forcing the defense to communicate. He's the one that allowed Clark to actually come down on our right side for that drive at the rim to get the foul. His basketball IQ is off the charts. Clark makes both free throws. He had the final shot of the game against Virginia on Saturday and just missed it. What would have been the game-winning bucket in the one-point loss. 
the Tigers suffering to the suddenly red hot Cavaliers. Man, they put it on Miami last night. Harrison Ingram rattles out. Clark has done a good job on the boards. Gerard constantly moving. Shot fake and a sweet touch. And Joseph Gerard has 10. Wojcik beats everybody down. And Shefflin blocks him. I believe they'll call him for a foul. I'm just trying to tell you, is that old man at the park who just knows how to play, utilizes ball fakes, you know, uses his eyes, uses hesitation moves, changes angles, understands how to play this game. Just that ball fake. I mean, look at that. January 6th, 1 of 10 for 5 points so far in this game. 10 points, 4 of 6 from the field. You think he knows how to play or what? He is a, a crafty guy. You know, he's got an emotional game coming up this weekend, too, when Clemson goes to Syracuse, mm -hmm. where he spent his career up until this year. Logic misses the first. We'll have women's basketball matchup of the night between a couple of ACC powers. Thursday night, 6 o'clock Eastern time. Number 12, Notre Dame against 15th Frank Louisville. That's 6 o'clock Eastern time, Thursday prime time. Women's basketball. This league has a number of teams that will make noise in the women's championship <laughs> come March. ACC with the most ranked teams in the country. And women's college basketball is going to set up for a great ACC tournament and March Madness. Gerard curling, looking for a little help. And there's a mismatch down low. No clear now. Baycott trying to stay in front of Gerard. Joseph steps back. Good job by Armando Baycott. Little to him. There he is. Nice pass from Cadeau, but now Hall gets Baycott well under the basket. Ingram cuts nicely, but couldn't quite handle the pass. Shot clock inside 15. Here's Cadeau. Baycott gives him another chance. Armando goes back up. A lot of contact there. And Wiggins, who they've been imploring to rebound harder, gets it. And going to the bucket is Dylan Hunter, Chase's little brother, and the ball foul. Clemson has come in with an attitude. Bucket is counting, and Dylan Hunter making his presence felt. Thoughts? Martin? No. Oh, it was against Duke in 1970. Charles Scott was one heck of a basketball player. Speaking of role models, Sagat saying about went to D. D. Wick Clinton in the Bronx, same school as Tiny Archibald, and as you said, Reese, it's a sneaky art you know, airman, and what he went through, obviously in the history of this country, and also R.D. You know, I don't believe Black History should be one month; it should be every month. We don't have white history. It's how do we celebrate culture all the time in our country? That's what we're so great at doing. Constant appreciation. R.J. Davison. Couldn't agree more. Jay Will should be a unifying thing that we celebrate all of the contributions that have been in R.J. Davis knocking down his first bucket of the night. The one thing you, you don't want is just because Armando Baycott is being aggressive and you're making it a priority to throw the ball into the block, you don't want R.J. Davis to diminish his aggressiveness. He still needs to be a guy in consideration for ACC player of the year and national player of the year. He's that talented. That's the first turnover of the night for Clemson, and through aggression, R.J. almost gave it back to him by getting a hand on it. Cadeau, Davis, and Ryan just one of 13 from the floor. In fact, Elliot Cadeau, he's a terrific passer, ball handler, and leader still finding his way on the perimeter. He's looking for his first three-point basket this calendar year. Yeah, but also, those two combined have one assist. So Clemson's been doing a great job taking them out of transition and also having active hands. Not opening up those passing gaps to get easy points in transition. Cormac still can't find the range. Yeah, well, that's the matchup where they switch. You got that matchup down low. E.J. Hall. R.J. Davis had no chance. 14 for the Tiger big man, and the lead is 13. One of the things you didn't see Duke do when North Carolina switched from Filipowski, he just spent his time roaming on the perimeter instead of going down low and muscling up like P.J. Hall. Call a goal 10. Bucket 
will count for Cadeau. That's his first bucket. That's right here. That's the matchup. Just taking him down low on the block. And just going hard at the rim. Boy, P.J. has really showed up tonight in this first half and gotten Clemson off to a scintillating start. 11-point lead. Tigers have the ball. Tries to follow his own. Cadeau comes out for the Tar Heels. Good pass to Baycott, who's going in and almost a chance for yet another three-point play for Armando, but he'll go back to the free-throw line where he's already made four tonight. Talk about posting up down low, Armando Baycott recognizing some of the mismatches and going right at it, being aggressive on the block and vice versa. This is the skill set of P.J. Hall. He can do it on the outside and in the inside. They talk about a guy that can utilize and pick and pop, can space the defense, and can really take his game to the next level. You know, one of the things, Reese, that has been so impressive about Armando is I, his conditioning is better this year than what it's been in years prior. Obviously, versus Duke, there was a long stretch in the first half where there wasn't a TV time now called, and he was winded, but I feel like he would have been forced to come out of the game before now he's a guy that can sustain playing through multiple minutes on the court at a pretty high pace, both defensively and offensively, and there's no drop-off. Also a much improved free-throw shooter as Carolina Crowell, which has fought the traffic outside and made their way inside the Dean Smith Center trying to rally the defensive troops. Pat Adams calls the foul. There was a timeout call. Was there a foul? Or? Uh, Elliot Cadeau, I believe, was called for the foul. They're discussing some things there. 5 10 left in the first half. We'll start over North Carolina. Elliot Cadeau just absolutely got hosed here, guys. I mean, this is an offensive foul on Hunter, first off. That's a push off. And as Hunter comes off, <laughs> he got called for that foul. There was barely any contact on that. <laughs> Always catch the second guy, Julia. <laughs> Not when the second guy doesn't do anything, RD. <laughs> and now there's a little frustration coming in. I mean, typically you get those calls when you're at home to work in your advantage, not to your disadvantage. Second foul on Cormac Ryan. That's not a foul there either. Nice, let him play. Officiating crew, Clarence Armstrong, Doug Sermons, and Pat Adams. Perhaps responding to that push and not wanting things to get away. Now they've all of a sudden really tightened it up. They just called a foul on R.J. Davis. That's his first. Now the only thing I would say about that play in particular, R.J. Davis had his hands all over. He was pressing up in him, his hands all over him. But still, this is the level of physicality that we had in the Duke Carolina game. They were allowed to play this way. So if the refs aren't allowing you to play this way, I get it, the fans are booing. The veteran teams, you have to adjust to the way the refs are calling the game. The veteran teams, both of these are just that. These are two of the older teams in college basketball. As Gerard will go to the free throw line. Zayden High, number one freshman from San Antonio has checked in from North Carolina. We've had three fouls called in the last nine seconds. The officials wanted to make sure they get control of the festivities here. Maybe it's getting a getting a little physical. I, my thing is, if you're going to make those calls, do that at the beginning of the game so at least I know how to play. Don't change up the way that you call the game with five minutes left to go in the first half. Gerard has a dozen. Hall has 14. And Clemson has a double-digit lead on the road in Chapel Hill. Shot clock at five. Hunter all over R.J. Davis, and Gerard comes away with the rebound. And Gerard has his pocket picked nicely as high makes a good defensive play. Ojek thought about it, now Carolina will swing it. 
Wide open in the corner is high. Fight for the rebound. And Wiggins comes out with another one. Even Wiggins' dad has been encouraging him to be a better rebounder. He's a 6'10 and a half. We know he can shoot. Get on the glass. He has had a couple of big ones in the early going tonight as Chase Hunter drains the three. And the lead is 14. Clemson is taking it right to North Carolina. They're aggressive offensively. The gang rebounding defensively, keeping Carolina off the glass for second chance opportunities. And they're completely taking North Carolina out of transition. Zero transition points for the Tar Heels this game. Didn't have any in Clemson in the first meeting either. RJ misses again. Godfrey tried to come out with the rebound. He didn't lose ball. It's Gerard. Every loose ball seems to be going the Tigers' way. Cross almost stumbled, able to get rid of it to Gerard before traveling. Here's Joe Gerard. No good on Jay Davis, and he's going to be fouled on RJ Godfrey. Well, they say defense wins championships, and defense will find a way to deem the winner of this game tonight. Chase Hunter doing a great job contesting there on RJ Davis, and then vice versa. RJ giving it right back. Seth does this to me every single time. <laughs> you know, it's it's the game before the game, then it's the game after the game. And look, I'll, I'll give it to Seth. I mean, he, he's absolutely right. We got a chance to call the Georgia Tech game. North Carolina tiptoed into that game. They weren't the aggressor. They lost. They played against Duke. They were the aggressor. They won. And so far in this game, they tiptoed into this game, and Clemson has been able to come in and be that aggressive team off the bat, and hence why they have a double-digit lead. But another factor to this, Jay Will, is I know you look at Clemson's record and you see how North Carolina played on Saturday night. This is a Tiger team that started the season 11 and 1. Gerard off the side of the glass with wins over Alabama, South Carolina, and TCU. In their recent games, a three point loss at home, that's a tough shot by Harrison Ingram, to Georgia Tech in double overtime. Controversial call at Duke that cost them a one point loss, and then they had a shot to win the game by this man, Jack Clark, against Virginia. Didn't go in then, does go in now as Clemson has its biggest lead. So this is, this is a team that is, in all likelihood, going to make the NCAA tournament. Joe Lenardi has them as an eight seed right now, and they really started well. They just put a little bit of a tough patch. But a talented veteran team that has shown up ready to play tonight. Somebody from North Carolina is going to hit a three sooner there. Aiden High with the tip. High coming in off the bench. Freshman got a steal, now tip in. The one thing you can't control if you're North Carolina is your defensive intensity and the way you attack the glass. You can prioritize throwing the ball down low just because you're missing shots. Get offensive rebounds. That is just a shame that shot didn't go in because that was in the pass from Clark to find B.J. Hall as R.J. Davis has it roll off and let's see who the foul is going to be on. It's on B.J. Hall. B.J. Hall. That's his second. DJ fouled out of the first meeting. I don't think he liked that one much. You know, and sometimes when you play so fast, you lose a bit, little bit of the psyche of the advantage of keep attacking P.J. Hall. P.J. Hall is the second leading scorer in the ACC. He obviously has a physical frame to bang against Armando Baycott. Prioritizing throwing the ball down low and getting him in foul trouble it creates a major advantage for the Tar Heels. Ian Shefflin has missed an extended period. They've been able to keep him on the bench with two fouls. And now for the last 98 seconds, P.J. Hall goes to the bench. And his high makes the free throw. As I mentioned early on. Well, you know, really, Clemson and North Carolina have split the last two meetings in Chapel Hill. Those previous 59 were a big problem for the Tigers. <laughs> 0 for 59. What Brad said here, Brad Barnell, the head coach of Clemson, was saying sometimes he walks around and there was an older gentleman saying, will you ever beat North Carolina? Or will it happen before I transition? He said, guys, before their win in 2020, that older folks would say, look, before I move on to the next life, I really want to see it. <laughs> wow. Got a chance to see another one. That was a strong move from Chauncey Wiggins, a sophomore from Grayson, Georgia. 15-point lead as we head for the one-minute mark to play here in the first half. Clemson just putting Armando in a ton of ball screens, keeping him on the perimeter, leaving that inside pocket to go to work. 
see RJ Davis making a tough three. And it is six for RJ. Inside a minute to go, and North Carolina cuts it to 12. The Tar Heel crowd urges their team to finish the half strong. If Clemson can keep its poise. That's the guy to do it, and Joseph Girard. Wiggins can make that. Rattles out on him. And North Carolina gets a shot quickly. Might have a two-for-one opportunity. Davis through his legs. Finds an opening room. And he knocks down the three. Now the Tigers can hold for the last shot. Case Hunter. That's no good. Paxton Wojcik will get a long one off, and that's how we'll go to the half. North Carolina finishes with a bit of a flurry, but it's still the largest before in this game, too. And here's the play I love most. A missed shot. But well, look, he continues to execute the scouting report, stays up on Wojcik, and doesn't allow North Carolina to get in transition. Those small details have been everything that Clemson has been better at than North Carolina does in this game. Second half underway. Clemson only got eight minutes and change from Ian Sheff when he did have five rebounds in that. He went 16 and 11 in the first meeting between these two and still were able to control the half. Excellent defense by Jack Clark on Cadeau. Joseph Girard was outstanding in the first half. He had a dozen. Elliot Cadeau was minus 16 in the first half. Nine minutes, minus 16 with zero assist. P.J. Hall right over the top of Harrison Ingram and it rolled out on him. Michael Baycock is terrific in the first half. Let's see if the Tar Heels can get him started here in the second. Davis finds him and dunk you very much. And typically when Carolina gets out in transition, Elliot Cadeau is really good at kicking the ball ahead. And I think they're going to need more of R.J. Davis probing the court with the ball, especially the more they get into the half court. Hall at 14 in the first half. He goes right to work. He uses the hook shot. And for the second time here in the second half, P.J. can't quite get it to drop. Davis, tough shot. That one flies. No good. He said he got hit. It looked like solid defense to me. That's a really tough shot in transition. When it's two on four. And I get it's going to increase the pace of the game, but. P.J. Hall has played well and shot it well from outside. He's got 17 points, and that is his fourth triple of the game, and the lead is back to 10. And if P.J. Hall is a pro, man, and he's going to be on the next level. He continues to shoot the ball like that at that consistency of the clip. Take the ball inside and out and just does a great job banging on the glass. You see, Armando Baycott, just by being active, got P.J. Hall his third foul on the block out. But R.J. is so good. We want to talk about probing, right? Probing, forcing that defense to come from the weak side. Gerard can't get down that deep. Those are the type of plays you're going to have to see from R.J. Davis to kind of get them going, especially if they're forced to execute in the half court. That foul... J. Will was called on Hall. It's his third, and Brad Brownell taking him out, sending R.J. Godfrey back into the game. Can't afford for him to get fourth, but they also have to be cognizant of how quickly they can get him back on the floor. Jeff went down the teams. That leaves Ingram. Ingram has eight. Clemson trying to withstand this early second half push. How about Hunter? Just working on Cadeau, but Cadeau forced the air ball. Ingram. Wow. It's Baycott. And he's fouled by Clark. Clemson wasn't doubling Armando Baycott in the first half. The double comes over and Harrison Ingram just sat right there. Jefflin turned his back to him, and that's easy money. I mean, you're, you're talking about a pass being delivered to the best Swiss Army knife in college basketball. 
Seth Greenberg, my counterpart in studio, has always called him a Draymond Green. I think he's more of a Ron Artest. And I'm talking about, let's predate the meta world piece. Let's talk about Queenbridge, Ron Artest. Bring it back to the city. A guy who can defend one through five. Had a spot up shot, can knock down shots from the outside. He's a better shooter than Ingram. But I just love the mentality of the way he plays. Ron Ron came at you 24-7, 365. He did not care who you were. He had his own swag, and that is who Harrison Ingram is on his team. He has been vitally important, and he's taken so much of the rebounding load off of Baycott, who's made all eight of his free throws tonight. He has 18, and the crowd at the Smith Center is alive. Trying to shake off that slow start and a long mountain to climb. Clemson jumped out 15 to 2 and is led throughout. Love the pressure that RJ Davis is putting on Gerard right now. Forcing the speed up. Just feel the tempo of this game changing. Shot clock at five. Godfrey has it knocked away by Baycott. The good hands. Godfrey gets it back. Shot clock still up against it. Hunter has to force one. It's no good. I don't think he got that off. They let him play, and now everybody's flying. A lot of contact, and they'll separate him on the floor and see what Pat Adams has. The foul was called on Jack Clark, who's picked up a couple of fouls a moment ago. Shot clock right here and see if he gets it off. Yeah, just he barely got, got it off. He got rid of it. Barely got it off. But still, look at the active hands. Look at the way R.J. Davis picked up Gerard. The full length of the court. That's not the same team we saw in the first half. Carolina down five. They're working on Clark and goes by him. And Elliott missed it. And Godfrey and Baycott are fighting for the rebound. And there's a whistle inside. And the foul will be called on Armando Baycott, that's his second. A half dozen college basketball games highlight the schedule Saturday, college game day in Kansas. That's a featured matchup. Jayhawks coming off that overtime loss at K-State last night, hosting Baylor. The Big 12 Sonic Blockbuster, you can always watch it on the app. You happen to be out and about. Kyle Perry was absolutely balling last night for Kansas State. How about some of those shots, man? Hey, especially that one spinning ball. Sheflin goes over Ingram. I don't think he realized where the basketball was, and Ian Sheflin will have a chance for a three-point play, and Clemson needed that to sort of settle things down. Yeah, it's just like Harrison Ingram got lost on the ball fake here. Couldn't really find it. Didn't know if the shot was going up or if it was passed, and Sheflin, the recipient with the big-time man, won. I think this guy might be the most improved player in the ACC, averaging almost a double-double. He's the only player in the ACC to have these numbers with two or more assists. And in addition to the 16 and 11 he had in the game against North Carolina in the first meeting, he also had five blocks and four steals. I mean, it, it, he has the baby face. He has the Jackie Moon hair. I mean, it is incredible. <laughs> I said, for a guy who shoots 56% from the three-point line, they need him to start shooting the ball more. Only 19 three-point attempts on the year, but his shot-making ability can open things up for P.J. Hall as well. Hubert Davis is saying today, he's the quintessential guy that you look at. Gerard has one rattle out. Sheffield is fighting for it. You look at Sheffield and you think, well, I can bust him up. And he said, nope. No, you can't. Not him. I mean, he is consistently, when Clemson tracks his GPS down, the guy who works the hardest, jumps the highest, goes the longest. But the guy who scores the most for North Carolina this year has been R.J. Davis. He's got nine. All on three balls. Godfrey thought about it. Now he'll get it into Shefflin. Shefflin is just ripped away by Ingram. Extra pass to Ryan gets Shefflin in the air. Cormac mid-side the arc, and he's finally got his first field goal. A timeout here as the Tar Heels have closed to within three. How about a couple of Stanford transfers? 
getting it done for the heels. Ingram with great hands, push the ball, transition. Great extra swing pass here by RJ. And what a bucket by Ryan to close it out. Well, BJ's got three fouls and Brad Brownell leaving him on the bench. Since he went to the bench with that third foul, it's been a 10-3 North Carolina run. That's 17 points. He's hit four three-pointers tonight. Shot clock's inside 10. Shefflin. Over the top of Cormac Ryan. Cormac Ryan only around 6'3 and a half, 6'4. Shefflin, the guy who's 6'8. RJ Davis has another one. He's got a dozen. Now Clemson did such a good job of that in the first half transition defense. And transition defense even applies to after a made shot. North Carolina, one of the best in the country, one of the fastest paces at pushing the tempo after a made bucket. RJ Godfrey got the offensive rebound and fed Shefflin. He'll go to the free throw line for a couple. That's the third foul on Armando Baycott. So Baycott and PJ Hall each with three fouls. Two-point game in Chapel Thrill. It's been so long since I've seen you. You guys should come up. Getting transition threes or those lagging people being able to drive to the rim. And that last three ball just left R.J. Davis four points short of tying Michael Jordan for 15th on North Carolina's all-time scoring list. I mean, think about that, R.J. Your name is next to your name is about the pass. Michael Jordan, the greatest player to ever live, to ever dawn the earth. R.J. Davis is going to pass him this evening. How about our, our, our buddy Joel Berry was sitting there going, what, am I not on this graphic? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, J.B. You know, Joel's my guy. Just, if you're talking about N.J., you're talking about the GOAT. That's nine points now for Chef Wendy. Missed about... 12 minutes of the first half with a couple of fouls, and now they're leaving P.J. Hall on the bench with three. Washington into the game, and three rattles out. Here comes Joseph Girard. Let's talk about P.J. Hall being on the bench. Uh, you and I were arguing during the break about when we decided to bring him back. I said the under eight. You think sooner? I think sooner. I mean, now look, if you could get a basket here and continue to hold the lead, but Carolina went on a run as soon as he went to the bench in the second half. Shefflin for three. Washington with a good box out on Wiggins. Mario's with the ball down four, headed toward the 13-minute mark. Davis pops open. Hunter trying to force him under the basket, and R.J. Davis now just two behind Michael Jordan. He's got 14, two behind Jordan, two behind Clemson. Chase Hunter just fell asleep there defensively. Nice little back cut by RJ. I love when little guys get down low on the block and post up. Uh, How about wow. the little guys knock down threes? Joseph Girard has 15 tonight. That's what a veteran does, answer the charge. Always moving at his own speed. How about Davis splitting the gun and Jack Clark just Close line, RJ in there. I don't know. I'm gonna have to review that. That's three. Uh, Jack Clark, who got his fourth start of the season tonight. Oh no! Across the chest. Yeah, he's across the line as well. Here's how he fell back with our foul. Back, yeah, for the but did you see the split? It was, it was, it was nice. You try to tell your big, stay attached to the guy setting the screen so he can't split. Dylan Hunter has checked in. Chase Hunter, his brother, has gone to the bench. Brad Brownell will try to get him a rest until the under 12 meeting timeout. Great pot from Paxson Wojcik, who's delivered some solid minutes tonight. He's got six, and again, Carolina back within three. But Wojcik's giving him a lot of energy. And what a hard basket, man. Wiggins from the outside, that's no good. They're the under 12, and B.J. Hall is standing, but not headed to the scorer's table yet. 
Ojedon Clark. Washington was open for a minute, couldn't get it to him. Baycott's also on the side. R.J. Davis, no good. Another rebound for Sheffield. It's all about execution right now for Clemson. Clark, well, it fades away, couldn't get it to go, and Dylan Hunter tracks down the loose ball. Shot clock resets to 20 for the Tigers as Brownell directs traffic. Gerard and Cormac Ryan, they went at it back in their Syracuse and Notre Dame days. Here's Clark for three. That's no good. Shefflin's fighting for it, and Gerard gets it. A step in three. No. After two bounces on the rim, and here comes R.J. Davis. Great job by Shefflin keeping that one alive. Shefflin got an open look, but still you want to try to utilize the clock and run a set. Logic was driving, and he's fouled on his way to the basket. The under 12 media timeout, second foul called on Gerard. Two points short of Jordan, and perhaps more pressing at the moment, three points short of Clemson with 10.46 to play. Uh, Dick Vitale and the entire V Foundation for Cancer Research have had the remarkable work that Dick has done. We certainly wish him the best. It's super scintillating. And sensational. And sensational. Mondo Baycott, who has been all of those things when he's been on the floor, has returned with three fouls. And so, too, is P.J. Hall. Both playing with three. Both have been outstanding tonight. Let's see you forecasting all of you. You said that P.J. Hall will be back. Maxim just makes one of two. Carolina showing some backcourt pressure. Didn't like it. Hunter wanted Wiggins to throw the ball back to Hunter on the other side. We look of disgust for the youngster. You see the control that North Carolina's had since PJ picked up his third foul early in the second half. Well, that's why PJ gave Wiggins the look. We just came out of a timeout. Let's run the play that our coach has called an ATO after a timeout, okay? So let's run the set, which had Hall go into the bucket to get a foul. Was on R.J. Davis, just his second. Clemson's biggest lead tonight, Jay Will, was 16. North Carolina has never led. Last tied at 2 2. That's 18 for B.J. Hall. North Carolina has been able to get a lot of things in transition and secondhand transition. And what's going to be critical for Clemson if they can continue, can continue to slow down the pace of the game is their ability to execute in the half court. That will require P.J. Hall to stay out of foul trouble because he is the focal point of their offense. He's better than 80% from the line makes them both. He has 19. The lead is four. Clemson going zone now. They've shown a good bit of this tonight. Typically, Brad Brownell has been a man-to-man -man guy, but the zone has been effective tonight against the Heels. Joe Girard's not on the floor right now, but certainly he knows how to execute the zone. He stays in Syracuse. And by the way, those are, those are winning plays for Clemson defensively. I know R.J. Davis can score, but getting him to have a high dosage of shots off the dribble from outside the arc, those are tough shots. Got back to Hunt from Shefflin in the pass from B.J. Hall. Shefflin's in the double figures with 11. Baycott goes right to work on Shefflin, and Hall comes in to clean it away. Oh, Shefflin got a handle on him. He got a hand on that. He got a, he got a block. We see him wanting the ball down low. That's who P.J. Hall is. And what a great basket cut there by Shefflin. And then even on the defensive end, Shefflin got a block on that, but with Baycott. Last foul was on Wojcik. So Clemson has been able to turn back every North Carolina charge. They haven't wilted a single time. They pushed the lead back out to six inside. Ten minutes to go. Tigers trying to win for just the second time ever in Chapel Hill. Paul's been hot from three. Not this time. Shefflin, Baycott fighting for it. Ingram pulls it away. Here come the Tar Heels. Davis by Shefflin. The pull-up won't go, and Shefflin gets the rebound. 
That's eight boards now for the Energizer for this Tiger team. Hunter from just inside the arc. That's no good. Hall gets the offensive board and keeps it free, and Dylan Hunter has it. Now Wiggins for three, and he rattles it in. The lead is back to nine, and, and Harrison Ingram is down on the play. The officials sending out the North Carolina training staff to have a look at it. No, Harrison. I think it was just Charlie's house. I certainly hope so. He's He's been so important in all facets for the heels. It's, looks like their legs just collided. He and P.J. Hall, they were fighting for that ball. They're still looking after Ingram. We'll check on his status. Good to see that they're going to help him up, it appears, right now. Clemson up 63-54. So Foster Pavilion, Pop Isaacs, Texas Tech. Top 25 team taking on Baylor, ranked 13th in the nation. Well, what a week for Baylor. They've got this one tonight. Ooh, they go to Kansas on Saturday. College game day will be there. And those guys in the Big 12 will have a lot to live up to. Have as much fun as we've had here tonight. Clemson has gone on a 7-0 spurt since North Carolina, which hasn't led tonight. Closed within two. Smart by Brad Barnell to put Wiggins at the top of the zone since he's 6'8", six, 6'9", six, using that wingspan to test shots on RJ. Oh, RJ shot. Davis over P.J. Hall. Oh, what a tough shot. He's got 16. I don't know if he could play any better defense than what P.J. Hall just did in RJ Davis. And that bucket ties him with Michael Jordan for 15th on the all-time scoring list. P.J. Hall fires for three. Left Jalen Withers is checked in with Harrison Ingram being attended to. But it looked as if they were working on both legs, as if perhaps he was cramping in both legs. The Tar Heels stand out, and now Withers, the veteran transfer from the Louisville's in the game. Long Davis, and it leaves it with Baycott. He's not likely to shoot it from there, but he will from there. Armando's got 20. Sorry, he was back to within five. Here comes the crowd. Chase Hunter rolls off, and guess who? And this guy just never stops working. Ian Shefflin with an offensive rebound. Fresh shot clock. Gerard wow. knocks down a three. Joseph Gerard has 18. What a pass. Baycott and a foul on Shefflin and a chance for another three-point play for Armando Baycott, who took one right in the kisser. I mean, what an exchange of plays. Joseph Gerard with the dagger of the three. I mean, what a great offensive rebound by Shefflin. Sets the screen here. Just a, a minute where Cormac Ryan has his hands down is enough for Gerard to see that. I mean, just the savvy veteran presence of Gerard in the court. And then Baycott with a strong and one opportunity after being slapped across the face. Baycott had 25 against Duke Saturday night, now shooting for his 23rd, and he got it. And at this week, you see North Carolina press up, really try to speed up the tempo of this game. Let's go over the top to Girardi. Stop about letting it fly. So it's more, just because you can go doesn't yeah. mean that you should go. Right. Look at the performances from Baycott. And P.J. Hall, we highlighted those two guys right off the top of the telecast, and they have more than delivered. Shot clock at five. Here's Chase Hunter. Rolls on. Oh, what the putback! You heard the fan correctly behind me telling Armando Baycott to block out. They, you got to put a body on a guy like P.J. Hall. You can't out-jump him. R.J. Davis draws the foul. I really want to show you guys this play. P.J. Hall is so active on the boards, you're gonna see the shot go. Watch Baycott. He's not boxing anybody out. He's standing there watching the fly of the ball. You have to put a body on a guy like P.J. Hall to keep him off the offensive glass. Especially a guy who 
probably a little bit longer and more explosive. And with that free throw, R.J. Davis just passed Michael Jordan on North Carolina's all-time score. You know. He's got 17 tonight. It's an incredible feat, but I'll tell you right now, from knowing R.J. doesn't mean anything unless they win this game. Davis, one out of two. Still a six-point lead for Clemson as we lined inside six and a half to go in Chapel Hill. All fumbled it. Didn't get a real clean look at it. Elliot Cadeau on the run, one on two. Cadeau all the way. about the ceiling, the peak for where Elliot Cadeau could be as a player. Look how explosive he is, cradling, protecting the ball. He's only played six minutes in this second half, and this has been a season of highs and lows, but when he's on the floor, his defensive intensity and his explosiveness off the dribble getting to the rack are his strong strengths. He classified to come in, and he's fit in beautifully with R.J. Davis. Of course, no Seth Tremble tonight, so Moore has been on Cadeau and on Paxson Wojcik, who's come off the bench. Three-point game. Jalen Washington applying pressure to Shefflin. And off to Hunter, shot clocks at five. Shefflin going to work on Washington, and Ian Shefflin oh had a chance for a three-point play. Flex. He was jacked anyway. I mean, you talk, look at the finish with the left hand. If you're worried about not being as athletic as your opponent, look at the left hand with the English off the glass. You talk about Jackie Moon swag or what? Come on. It, this dude is a terrific athlete. He was a high school quarterback. Said he missed the games, but not the practices, and he liked being inside to play basketball. <laughs> Can't finish the three-point play, but a big bucket there. Keeps the Clemson lead at five. Nice slip pass. Now Cormac Ryan has a look. So every North Carolina fan is waiting for Cormac Ryan to knock down threes at a high clip. Cormac is 0 for 6 from behind the arc tonight. Hunter shakes free. Now slips it to Hall. Hall will shoot the short jumper. It rattles out. Davis on the push. Baycott's got it inside. Offensive. That's an offensive. And it's an offensive foul on Armando Baycott, and that's four. It would not have been an offensive foul if he did not extend that arm. If he just kept his shoulder down, not extend the arm, it would have been a no call. But that extension right there, that's an all day. I mean, what a play by P.J. Hall to put his body on the line and get that offensive foul. Hall himself has had some foul trouble tonight, playing with three, but it's standout defensive play there. Here's Gerard. He's made a ton of big baskets tonight. Backing oh, down. Good go. Oh. Now Hall for three. DJ left that one well short. Could go on the push. RJ Davis working on Chase Hunter. Hall with the block. They got the tip. No. Jalen Washington has it. Gerard ties him up. That's a foul. And they're going to call him for a foul. Ball is called on Joseph Girard. That's his third. And what fight by North Carolina to stay on the offensive glass. And remember Jalen Washington, he's played well. But sticking in there is Harrison Ingram, who just returned to the bench as a mid instance, apparently, based on the way they were working on him. Dealing with some cramps. Now, Washington is going to be shooting a one and one. It's a 62% free throw shooter. Makes the first. Now, North Carolina women highlighting ACC Network's women's basketball doubleheader. Notre Dame, Florida State, North Carolina, Duke. That comes your way Sunday, starting at noon Eastern time. And Harrison Ingram has returned from the Tar Heels. Baycott to the bench with those four fouls. Back to a three.
Crowd's worked overtime tonight. That's off his leg. And it goes off the leg of Hunter, and it's a turnover. What great hands by Elliot Cadeau to stay up there with that triple handoff. It's just the fourth turnover of the night for Brad Brownell's team. So one of the things people will rave about Cadeau just, oh, he got him on the arm right foul. there. Hey, look, yeah, you know, right. that, that was a foul. Ref missed it, but no, it's a, the refs have to make the call. A late, late foul on Tobacco Road brings back some bad memories. Wow. For and for the first time since it was 2-2, we're tied. Now without Baycott in the game. Of P.J. Hall on the block. Well, they had the youngster James Aconquo into the game for the first time tonight, and he drew the foul. It'll be Listen, a little out-of-body experience. It kind of cleanses the soul a little bit. You know, you had a rough game the other day against Kansas. Didn't rebound the ball like you wanted to. Gave up too many open shots. You cleanse the soul. You get tossed. You give your son a chance to kind of finish out the game. Life's good in Houston. Double T's. He's ejected, but the Cougars <laughs> up big. Meantime, Pop Isaacs and Texas Tech trying to snap a two-game skid. Pop Pop is so good at the end of the games. He gets downhill. He shoots the three. He distributes the basketball. He is a tough matchup. Red Raiders and Bears after our finish recent Chapel Hill. 3.58 to play. Clemson's led by as many as 16. North Carolina has fought back to tie the game at 70. First tie. So it was a bucket apiece early. And now P.J. Hall, who has just been outstanding tonight, 21 points, goes to the free throw line. Misses the front end. Let's see who touched it last. It'll be North Carolina basketball. And a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. Oh, oh no, my that's goodness. Clemson's ball. That is two, it. two missed calls. The foul on Cadeau that they didn't call. And then the out of bounds there. That was Clemson's ball. Armando Baycott is returning. Jay Will, you're exactly right. They're two really critical calls. They've not gone Clemson's way. Now let's see if the Tigers can get a stop against Harrison Ingram who tied this game with three a moment ago and right through the five hole for number five as Carolina turns it over. Now remember, you know, Clemson has had a lot of tough losses. A one-point loss to Duke, a one-point loss to UVA, a three-point loss in double overtime to Georgia Tech. The biggest thing they have to do is believe they can win a close game and execute down the stretch. Hall, offensive rebound, and P.J. Hall, a chance for a three-point play. Here's what you love about P.J. Hall. So many times we see big men do this. They get offensive rebounds, and they bring the ball down. Look how he, he kind of keeps the ball high to a degree and powers through. A grown man basketball. Boy, he has played his backside off tonight. 23 points, eight rebounds. Just missed the front end of a one and one a moment ago, but a chance to push the lead back to three. He does not. 80% free throw shooter, a little better than that on the season. Missed his last two. Elliot Cadeau, and an offensive foul. They'll get Cadeau for the offensive foul. I just don't like the play about him going one-on-one -on -one in an ISO situation, get a ball screen. You know, it's just a push-up right there. It's so blatant. It's so blatant. Inside three minutes to go. What a cut by Gerard. Gerard gets it knocked away by R.J. Davis, but Hall has it back. Shot clock still at 12. Clemson will reset. He's Hunter to Hall. Hall lets it fly. Front rim no good, and Cadeau has it. Tar Heels on the run. Cut off by Hunter is Davis. Now back out to Cadeau. Ingram who hit a three to tie it moments ago. Baycott playing with four. He's the wrong guy. R.J. Davis. 
and get it to go. Last touch by North Carolina. It is worth mentioning. It has been a city of horrors for Clemson historically. One and 60 in North Carolina's house. The only victory coming in 2020 under Brad Brownell. Now the Tigers with just over two minutes to play in a two-point lead. Gerard. Four, three. Joseph Gerard now has 21. Boy, Clemson has shown some real toughness. Answering charge after charge. Now trying to hold on. Ingram left this game for several minutes. The parent cramps. Almost threw it away. And then Jalen Washington does throw it in the back. And it'll be a turnover, and Clemson will have the ball. Sixth turnover of the night for Hubert Davis's team. Well, look here, RJ. He tries, he takes the shortcut. Don't take the shortcut. It's okay if you lose him. Just follow him and chase him over under that screen. Just chase. You know, when players try to take a shortcut, Gerard is so good at recognizing that he bounces back. And that's how he hits a three. Easy to get caught up on that big muscle mass. Man. <laughs> and now the foul going to be called on Paxson Wojcik. That's his second foul. And that is double bonus time for Clemson. The 10th team foul against North Carolina. And that's what teams are going to try to do. When Cadeau is on the court, they're going to play off of Cadeau. And if you can take North Carolina out of transition, RD, their ability to win a championship will ultimately be determined with how they can execute in the half court. Jack Clark, now five of six from the free throw line this season. Jack's had to deal with some injuries, just now getting back into the flow. Veteran player transferred in from NC State. Gives them depth, gives them size down low to bang against the bigs from North Carolina. And also has a great feel around the basket. He's hit all four of his three throws tonight. Four or five coming in. And Clemson, a three-possession lead up by seven. Where will the Tar Heels turn for a big bucket here? R.J. Davis has it. And a foul outside on Chase Hunter. That's three on him. The last thing you want to do right now if you're Clemson is a tic-tac foul and stop the clock, allow North Carolina and a 90-plus percent free throw shooter to go to the line and knock down two. Got to make the clock your friend, not your enemy. RJ surprising. He is. He struggles at the free throw line tonight. Missed free throws cost North Carolina the Georgia Tech game that you and I saw last week. Davis gets it back to a six with 90 seconds to play. Point lead. Carolina with pressure in the backcourt. There's PJ Hall open. They'll get it across easily to Clark and he'll take his time and let Chase Hunter run it. I am shocked. There's some North Carolina fans right now that are leaving the stadium and the game is not over. Then we're close to being up. You saw that traffic coming in here. Go Gerard. Shot. Shefflin fighting for the rebound. There's a whistle inside, and Shefflin's hard work is going to be rewarded as he is fouled, and that's Harrison Ingram. It's called for the foul, his second. Shefflin just, Shefflin just, just working. He is he's working. Two shots, two, two. And he's the aggressor. This dude has another double-double, his second in two games this season against North Carolina. But a missed free throw there. Clemson has missed some big ones of late. He could have stretched out this lead. Now 8 of 12 in the second half. Lead is 6. Jefflin has 12 points here in the second half. RJ Davis turns the corner, gets past Hunter, kind of lost his balance as Hunter is trying to avoid the foul, and Clemson has it inside a minute to go. Up by six. 
six. Hunter Holt again, almost trapped. Shefflin finds Hall. Hall back to Shefflin and is knocked away by Cormac Ryan. Shot clock's at 13, still being Clemson basketball. And Shefflin is just everywhere on the court. He's making himself available. One of two players in the country averaging nine points and nine half rebounds and two assists per game. Only one in the ACC. He's been outstanding in the second half. Big reason that Clemson's been able to fight off thus far every Tar Heel push. Oh, North Carolina. Shot clock inside five. five. Clemson's got a left one fly. Wojcik has the rebound for North Carolina. Cormac Bryant trying to get past Gerard. Cormac gets it up quickly. It rolls out. Man, has he had a tough night. Baycott fighting for it. The whistle underneath. Clarence Armstrong is going to call the foul on P.J. Hall. That's number four on the Tiger star. Back against the wall. Have lost several games in a row by a combined five points over the last three games. And Clemson has came in here, has executed and fought North Carolina every possession. Baycott's free throw is no good. 23 for Armando and North Carolina is gonna need some Tar Heel magic down the stretch or Clemson is going to be so euphoric, even Tyler from Spartanburg is going to celebrate the second win in Chapel Hill all time if they can hang on for 23.6 seconds, a five-point lead for Brad Brownell's team. We mentioned this earlier. This is a really good team, Jay Wilden. Hit a little bit of a snake bit and stretch. Probably didn't play their best basketball about a month ago. Well, three-game losing streak, all by double figures. The middle one was against North Carolina, but of late, a tough loss to do. A tough loss to Virginia. One against Georgia Tech at home, you can't let them get away in double overtime. But this is a team that scheduled aggressively. Their net's in the top 40, and now this could be a resounding win for their resume for the rest of the way. I heard P.J. Hall talk after the UVA game in which they lost, and his biggest thing that he kept hitting home on is we have to keep chopping wood. And when you hear that, that's a sign of a veteran that understands we're going to take our, we're going to take our lumps in the ACC. You know, it's one of the best conferences there is in the nation, and we're playing against good teams night in, night out. But you have to take ownership of that RD. They're in all these games. How they execute down the stretch ultimately determine whether they won or lost those games. They lost. But today, you felt like you're watching a different Clemson team. You and I talked about pregame. When you're in those games as Clemson, do you believe that you're going to win or do you believe that something inevitably will go wrong again? And this is a Clemson team that has been executing and they've been fighting defensively and they put themselves in the position to win a five with 23.6 seconds left. You know, there's certain things that sportscasters bring up that no one really thinks about. The 1 and 60 mark in Chapel Hill is something that Clemson fans think about. It's something that their coaches and players have heard about. And when the Heels made that charge tonight, or made numerous charges here in the second half, could have done exactly what you're talking about and say, okay, how are we going to let this one get away? And they don't have it salted away yet. So 23.6 to go. North Carolina putting on the heat. Former high school quarterback Shefflin has charged with getting it in bounds. That was almost a turnover. You don't want to run. Just knocked it out of bounds. You don't want to run to the corners of the court. You want to catch the ball somewhat in, in between both lanes. Oh, that 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 looks like that's going to be North Carolina ball. They're going to go have a look at it. Pat Adams over at the monitor now. I'm part. Beg your pardon, Pat Adams headed to the monitor to join Clarence Armstrong. They're going to look and see if they have enough video evidence to overturn that. Let's have another look here. His, his hand is the last on the ball. Right there, he hits it. I think that's Clemson basketball, Joe. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look conclusive, so. They're still looking at the videos we check in with the studio. And, Reese, we want to let you know that Texas Tech Baylor is underway right now over on ESPN News. <clears throat> Both teams start the night just a half game back of Houston atop the Big 12. Texas Tech Baylor coming up after we finish up in Chapel Hill. Kevin, thank you. You're right, Clemson ball. Hey, look.
looked at the video. And Adams, Clarence Armstrong agreeing that. Yeah, but see, look at his right hand. I mean, it's not complete, but his right hand. He, the thing his right hand right there on the right side. From the other angle, though, it looked as if there wasn't contact with the ball yeah. once he dislodged it. Now Clemson will try to be a little less adventurous getting it in this time. Jeff went ahead to Hall. And they're going to have to foul. Tough pass. But instead, wow. Hall with an errant pass, a poor mistake for a veteran to make. Now R.J. Davis trying to find a little bit of room. Not much time left. Inside five seconds now. And boy, Clemson flirted with disaster with a really inexcusable turnover. And I believe they're going to get out of here and be able to tell about it. Yeah, P.J. Hall is smiling right now. <laughs> he just looked at me. <laughs> looked at me and said, uh, probably shouldn't have passed that one. Yeah, you just hold on to the rock, big man. You go to the free throw line. And now the North Carolina faithful after that euphoric victory against Duke on Saturday night, leaving in a much different mood. 4.6 seconds away from the second loss ever to the Clemson Tigers in Chapel Hill. You know, Reese, one of my best friends is a Dio Tario fan. Grand Bonnie, we were talking about this before. How does North Carolina handle success? And I'm sure that's what Hubert has talked about over the last couple of days. Yes, the admiration, the adoration is great. We beat two. But now we have to, there's nine more games left in the regular season for the ACC. And our goal is to win a championship. How do we bring that intensity every game? Well, Hubert was worried about this really in the days after. Wanted them to recover on Sunday, kind of got after his squad yesterday. They were sharp and shoot around today, but man, did they come out flat. Or, to give credit where credit has been most deservedly earned, Clemson came out with his hair on fire and set the tone. Well, Clemson came out and they punched North Carolina in the mouth. You saw that by their 15-2 lead to start the game. And Ian Shefflin has been everywhere in this game. He just does all the little things. And I know that sounds like a coaching cliche to people at home. But I can't tell you how imperative it is to win games on the road. He's made himself a target, hard basket cuts. He's always been cool, calm, and collective on the block. Found different ways to finish, not over the top, but up underneath people. And him and P.J. Hall have been the absolute bright spots for Clemson basketball tonight. Another double-double against the Tar Heels. Almost identical numbers. And a lot of those rebounds were crucial. And now Clemson has won his last two or three games here at Chapel Hill. How about that? Wow. As R.J. Davis banks one in to make it 80 to 76. And now the Tigers are two and 60 all-time at Chapel Hill. 